Welcome to the Sports Card Lessons Podcast. I'm your host, Big Ken. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on a streaming service, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever I drop any new content. Welcome, and thanks for being here. How is everyone doing? Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Come on, man. It is here. That day is here. And if you're a you're a Chiefs fan or a 49ers fan, you're super pumped like me. Um, kind of bittersweet, though, right? You know, we're so excited for the game. But the reality is when this game ends tonight, the season is over. Um, I mean, we have the draft to look forward to and and preseason and all that stuff. But we don't get another NFL regular season game till September, seven months away. And I go through this every year. Like it starts with fantasy. So if you do fantasy like I do, it's it's a seven day a week job with fantasy football. Uh, I'm in it to win, right? So I put a lot into it. Oh, listening on the radio, I talk about this. Uh, you know, waiver wire Tuesday, but even even waiver wire is Tuesday night. I'm waiver wiring every day. I'm getting as much information as I can just to to try to be a few weeks ahead, you know, in that. So, you know, when that comes to an end, when the fantasy ends, you know, it's there's usually one more game left in the in the regular season, and it's kind of a letdown. But you have playoffs, and you still, we still have these football games. Not as many, but we still have games going on. We start to lose Thursday nights and Monday nights and things like that. But now if this is it. Last weekend was our first weekend with no football, right? I was like, oh, my God, what do we do? Uh, so, yeah, seven months, seven months. It's hard to believe. Uh, I, I know we'll get through it. I know we will, but it's and maybe it's the maybe it's the respite we need, right? Before, because if this this just kept going, there'd be I would at some point I would probably just burn out if I didn't have all this time off. But um, and even the betting too, like people who do the betting on it, and and I, and I think a lot of people I talk to, if you bet on football, you bet on all kinds of other sports. Uh, I'm not a big sports better. Uh, I myself, uh, I put a few parlays together late in the season. I think uh, late November, December, uh, I won a few, I lost a few, but you know, I, I don't, I don't have the time. I don't want to take the time to start, you know, deep diving into, you know, all the, the information needed to be successful there. So, you know, I withdrew my winnings. I'll wait till next year. and may, Maybe I won't even jump back in. But anyways, today's episode, um, my good friend always said in the hobby, participation is required. I'm not going to steal his line, but today's episode is about being active in the hobby creates hobby success, right? It's kind of almost the same thing, but I, you know, I'm changing it up a little bit, uh, but it's, it's a hundred percent true. A hundred percent true. I set up at the garden state show in Secaucus, New Jersey, um, this, this weekend, I was up there Saturday and shout out, uh, to everyone who came by said, hello. Uh, it was good to see, uh, Mookie Chilson again. Uh, I missed him the last couple of shows, uh, Jeff at Jeff's cards. There's, you know, there's a number of dealers when these shows are going on, if there's a Burbank, if there's a Dallas or a Chicago or something like that, these people, you know, they, they, they're traveling off to those shows, probably something I should be doing. Like, you know, I, I'm at that point. I'm on, I'm on the, the verge of, you know, stepping up my travel a little bit too, but I like, I like being like, I like my home base, right? I like sleeping in my own bed, things like that. So, uh, I'll get there. I'll, I'll get there. Um, a lot of traveling involved for the Burbank show, right? It's, and I, I was talking to Jeff about this and it's coming up and he said, are you doing Burbank? I said, no, I had the opportunity. I had uh, uh, my guys, uh, heavyweight, heavyweight cards uh, reached out and said, hey, I can get you some table space at Burbank if you're interested. And I seriously thought about it. 
but it's just, it's such a long, it's traveling, you know, you're going to travel out there Thursday and come back Sunday or Monday. And it's just a lot of traveling just for a few days. And if I'm going to do that or any of the bigger shows like Dallas or whatever, I'd like to just go do the show and, and spend a few days and see some sites or go see some things or do something kind of plan ahead. Um, so, so moving forward on some of these bigger shows, even Nashville, Nashville's another show I'd love to get to, but I know Nashville is, you know, such a great city. If I go there, I don't want to go to Nashville and spend a hundred percent of my time at a show and not see, you know, the local attractions. So I, I just want to plan ahead on some of these shows and j just make the most out of these trips. Um, when I got to the show, the last show, uh, I talked like well, the last last show I was there last month. I talked about being moved from the front row to like second between second and third row. And when I got there, I was second from the last in the back of the room. You know, and at first I was a little upset, a little annoyed. I was like, why, why I get pushed to the back? Uh, but as the day went on, I realized, you know, I may have lost some buying opportunities. But as for sales it's really all about having the right product in your cases. I've talked about this for four seasons, you know, know the show, know what's going to sell there. Um, if you do the show and you're selling stuff at the show, you know, kind of what to stock up on. And I know shows today, they're changing. Uh, I understand that, you know, the, it, it, it used, you know, a couple of years ago, the, the shows would get so crowded, you couldn't even move in the aisles and things like that. And, and, and a lot of that has changed. There's a lot of foot traffic at these shows, but certainly not the crowds uh, that we used to see. So it, it becomes more about quality and having the right card in your case versus quantity and just uh, thinking if, if I could put anything in that case, somebody's going to come by and buy it because that's not that's not true anymore. You really have to, you really have to know what you're putting in your case. If you want to be successful, if you want to have sales at these shows. Um, so it's really about having the right product in your cases. And I know I've talked a lot about having Mahomes cards, right? So I know having Mahomes cards in your it, 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 Mahomes cards in my case is always good. Right. Um, but I know from experience having these cards too, it, it's not always, always positive. I mean, not everyone wants to pay up for bigger cards and it usually turns into a lot of negotiation with no deal getting done. Um, I've had my, my, uh, lime green, the 2017 optic lime green, Patrick Mahomes. I've had that card for over a year and I can't tell you how many times I negotiated with people on this, on this card and they never bought it. More than any other card I think I had in my case, that card was always a focal point and negotiation. People say, well, this last sale and this and that. We went back and forth. And I always have, going into a show, I always have a price point in my mind on every one of my cards. And it doesn't mean what I paid for it and this is what I have to get for it. It's, am I going to sell this card? Is the time right to sell this card? Regardless of what I paid for it and what what the market value is now and what somebody is willing to, because I could go to a show and say, Hey, I want to, I need to get $1,700 for this card and no one's ever going to buy the card. It's always going to be my, my card. And I, and I know that because no one is going to come in and, 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 and pay that money uh, on that card. So if I'm going to bring that card and I plan on selling that card, I, I need to know what the price point is, where, where I'm ready to sell it at. Um, and it just so happened this weekend, right? Perfect weekend, Super Bowl weekend. Chiefs are in there. People are believing, you know. There's although I think there's a lot more people on the 49ers, but people are believing Mahomes is going to pull it out. And um, not only did I have uh, that card, I had the downtown um, that I talked about, the the, the PSA 10. I also had the Honeycomb uh, PSA 9 and the Genesis PSA 10. So I had four of those cards in my case, and they were very popular. People coming through, looking at it. I had one girl who was so interested in the downtown um, and just went on and on and on, with negotiate, just trying to get it. But again, I had these price points in my mind. I knew what I would sell it for, and I knew what I would keep it for. And there was... and. And, and I'm being fair. Like, I know the hobby. I'm not going out there and saying, 
you know, the, this card is 950, but I'm not selling it for less than a thousand. No, this card is 950 and I'll sell it for 900, right? Or 925. Just like I'm being reasonable, but not so reasonable that I'm giving the card to somebody that they can run three tables down and make money on it, right? I'm being reasonable enough that if they're going to take the card because they want the card and they want to hold on to the card, I'm offering them a great price on the card. But if they want to flip the card immediately, then it just depends on what their outlet is, what their exit plan is on that card. So if they come in and buy it from me from 80 or 85%, do they have somebody that's willing to buy it for 90 or 95%, then it makes sense to them. But if they have somebody that only wants to pay 80 or 85%, they better hope that, you know, the comp goes up in the next day or two. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't, don't really need to explain that much more, but I got a deal done. I ended up selling all four of those cards, all four of those cards. I sold, uh, it, it came in a group, uh, you know, they bought them all together in a lot and it was a very easy sale. Uh, they came up, they looked, they went through them, um, and they came up with a number that was very low. And, and I said, whoa, wait, 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 uh, cause I, I'm, uh, maybe you're, maybe you're not calculating, right? Because I think we're almost a thousand dollars in my mind. We'd be a thousand. And then I took it out and I said, let me tell you where I want to be on all four of these cards. And I gave them my price of each four cards. And they said, perfect. Struck it. Shake hands. The deal's done. So all of a sudden on these cards that was so difficult, right? To, to all of a sudden one day somebody wants to pay exactly what my price point was on that card. So that worked out perfectly for me. And I almost think because I walked that show most of the day, there was really no other Mahomes cards in that room. I walked that show in the morning twice before it started because I'm always looking, I'm, I go out there, I say, well, somebody else, maybe they'll have a, a lime or a, you know, a downtown or a honeycomb, not one. I didn't see why I, there were other Mahomes cards in there. There were some very big, you know, rookie autograph cards in there, just insanely priced. But the price point that I was selling them out, I was the only one in the room that had these cards, right? So uh, it worked out perfect because the person that came to buy them from me in a lot, they were willing to pay, you know, a, a up above 85%, but not quite 90, right? So that worked out perfect for me. And I've had these cards for so long. Some of them I bought into, uh, some of them, I should say that op, that green, uh, that lime I had for so long, um, what I bought into it and what I got, what I got out of it was almost probably a, a, a wash, but I had that card. But the other three cards I was into very good very good into those cards. And it made a lot of sense for me to move all three, all four at once. Uh, so that worked out great. Um, this show, I usually sell one or two higher end hockey cards, right? Uh, at this show. And it always works out that way. Uh, and it's usually uh, Rangers or devils, you know, because you, you, you know, you're in that area. Um, so when I go to this show, when I'm getting ready to go, I don't, most shows, I don't put a lot. I put my big hockey cards in a case and the rest I'll throw in a two row box. And if there's room on the table, I'll put it up. If not, if somebody comes talk to me about hockey, I'll pull the box out and say, here, I've got this hockey here. It's all price. Go through it. You want to make me an offer on anything. Uh, and at this show, a guy walks up to the table. He starts, he says, Hey, if I buy a number of these hockey cards out of the box, he goes, can you give me a deal? I looked at him. I'm like, bro, you're familiar. I mean, we've done a deal before. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm from Montreal. And I'm like, did you go to the Gillette show? And he's like, yeah. He goes, Oh my God, that's where it, why you, I know you. So we did this huge deal. I talked about this at that Gillette show where the guy from Canada came down and he just bought a whole bunch of hockey cards from me. Same guy, right? came here, went through the box, probably bought 35, 40 hockey cards, mostly all low-end cards, stuff that I've been carrying back and forth the shows, back and forth the shows that, you know, I was happy to move this stuff. Uh, and who knew? Who knew that this guy from Montreal was going to, he had, he came to visit a friend 
and he was going to be at this show, right? So it paid for me to have all this stuff, just knowing the show, having this hockey stuff. And, and yeah, I unloaded, you know, a, a, the better, the better part of a two row box. And I was super excited about that. Uh, pop culture, pop culture really doesn't sell that well here. Uh, you know, I know the pop culture. I know the shows that sell where the pop culture sells. Although I bring, I bring a few of those cards and I'm always putting them in the case because if nothing else, people stop and see, you know, certain, you know, like a Seinfeld card or a Jersey Shore card or a Britney Spears card or a Lady Gaga card. So I put a number of them in there just because people like to stop and they look at it and they're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Or, you know, they consider buying it. Uh, I know the pop culture, the Chantilly show. Uh, I sold a ton, ton of pop culture at the Chantilly. I only did that show once. So I say, no, the show, that's all. Oh, that's what I know of the show right now. And the card vault shows in Massachusetts um, at Gillette stadium at um, Fenway park. Uh, yeah. I, I, I sold, I sold a bunch of uh, pop culture there and I had just gotten back the uh, Taylor Swift, Kanye West card, that 2011 um, American tops, American pie. Uh, so I had sent them out for grading uh, a number of cards out. That was one of them. It came back a PSA nine. So I wanted to get that down in my case this weekend, which I did. And it stopped a lot of people. And a lot of people talked about the card, but nobody wanted to pull the trigger on the card. So, you know, ho hopefully, uh, hopefully she'll stay popular even after the, uh, even after the uh, Super Bowl ends and uh, I'll get a deal done with that card. Uh, I'm not a basketball guy, right? And I've talked about this before. Um, last week, I went to a, a local show in Enfield, Connecticut, uh, and I saw everyone was ripping the, these Bowman University uh, basketball blasters pulling and they in these cards like you know i like to do the women's sports and they had angel reese and Paige beckers caitlin clark i mean there these cards are are in these boxes as well uh and there was there was a lot you know there were dealers that were showing me all the cards they got i bought uh, a few a few cards why i was there at that show some singles um but a lot of the dealers were showing me their hits that they were getting, these autos, refractors, these number cards. Uh, there was just somewhat of a buzz in the air over this product. So after I left, I went home. I was looking online. I was looking at some of these prices of the singles. And I'm like, wow, I'm, compared to the price of the blaster, which is $25, uh, I mean, the singles were selling at 15 20 25 up to 50 Some of the number cards were selling for a few hundred. So I thought, nah, you know what? Let me order some of these. Let me go. Let me rip through them. I can keep the women and sell the men. Like that was my thought when I when I did this. So I ordered eight blasters online, $24.99, free shipping. Um, I ripped them all. They came Wednesday. I ripped them all. Uh I had I had uh four. I out of those, I pulled four autos. I had two numbered Caitlin Clark cards. Uh, Paige Becker's uh, number card, some Angel Reese cards, you know, and a bunch of, you know, the uh, men's players too. So refractors, some uh, pink refractors and numbered cards. You know, I went through the values on the uh, autos and, and the numbered cards. I one touched up anything that was over $50 and I threw them in my case for Saturday, uh, priced them accordingly, whatever they were just a few dollars over what they were selling for on, uh, on eBay, by far the hottest cards in my case. By far the hottest cards in my case. Once my Mahomes cards were gone, these were the hottest cards in my case. I sold all but one card. One of the women's cards was numbered to five. Uh, I still have that card. I'm sorry, to 25. I still have that card, but I sold every other card that I had brought with me. Now, I didn't bring, like, I only brought things that were that were numbered or autographed, right? Easily, easily 4X to my investment on those cards. Easily 4X to my, my investment on that card, on those cards. And then I thought to myself, wow, if I don't go to the Enfield show the week before, 
never see the buzz on this Bowman, you know, Bowman U basketball. I've missed out on a whole opportunity, a whole lot. I don't know how long it'll last. I'm going to order eight more and uh, I'm doing a local show this, this weekend before I'm, you know, I'm, I hit, hit the two casino shows. Uh, and, and I'm hoping I can, I can repeat, you know, do it exactly what I did this past weekend. Um, you know, like everyone else, we go to these shows, we go to these local shows, uh, you know, we want to find steals and deals, find a PC card or, you know, hunt for something, uh, or, or, you know, get a card that you could flip at a late, maybe flip now or flip at a later date. But it's being there, observing what's going on, talking to people that you really get great information. Um, there's always show, always conversations uh, about what's going in the hobby at these local shows, about you know what's going on at other shows, bigger shows, because these guys are set up at these local shows. They're doing Dallas. They're doing Burbank. They're doing Chicago and Tennessee. So they're coming back and talking about it. So you're getting a lot of good information there too. It doesn't mean you show up at a show that, you know, you have to buy something. And if you don't buy anything, uh, that you leave empty handed that, you know, it was the show wasn't good because there's so many more levels to a show than just going in and buying or even, even selling a card. Some of us, we go to a show cause we have a couple cards to sell too, right? Maybe somebody's interested in it. Uh, you know, you meet the promoters at of these shows and of other shows. I can't tell you how many promoters I met from other shows at these local shows, handing out flyers saying, come check out this show or come check out that show. And, and I did that um, last week and I, I met a promoter. I got a flyer and I drove uh, to Rhode Island to a show in Rhode Island just because now I knew that show was there. I, I met the guy who was running it, handed me a flyer. I'm going to go check it out. Um, but not only, not only cards or, or, you know, promoters or information, you get offered other things too. I've, I've talked about running into the uh, heavyweight cards and saying, Hey, we got table space in Burbank. You know, if you're interested this is how I ended up with space at the national last year, being at a show, somebody a right place, right time. Somebody said there's a space available if, if you know anyone is interested in, and I ended up taking it. Um, I attend all these local shows monthly. And sometimes I see the same exact people and the same exact cards month after month, but there's a lot of great information that's coming out. One would have been, you know, the, the these Bowman U cards is one of them, right? But there's so many other pieces of information that are coming out from all these shows. And if and if you don't attend, if you don't go, or if you're not actively, you know, participating out there, there's a lot you'll miss. There's a lot you miss. Like we get a lot online and I know social media pro provides us a lot of things, but I can tell you from experience that I miss more than I see when it comes to, you know, Instagram and Facebook and things like that, because I think there's so many people, the more people that, you know, you look, how many, how many people, uh, followers do you have on, on, you know, Instagram that these people are posting every day. And then I ask you, how many stories did you see? Did you go through today? Because I know you didn't go through 3000 or 4000 stories. And I just think there's so much that we miss out there online. And I think being, you know, physically out there, I mean, for me anyways, being out there and going to these shows and talking to people, I say being there, being active, you know, it's also showing your hobby community that you're you're a particip participating member, right? No, nothing but good things will come from being active and attending shows. I'm telling you, nothing but good things. Um, I've left more shows empty-handed, right? Not buying anything, but the promoters, the dealers, they know I'm there supporting, you know, what they're doing. And they'll support me the same way. What I'm doing here, they support my podcast and they support me in the ways that, you know, the things that I'm doing the best that they can. So, uh, 
definitely, you know, just, and I, and I say this again, as you know, a lot of it is, is, you know, the, the, the particip participation, um, but it's just being active, right? It's just getting out there, uh, being active and it really creates a lot of hobby success. And for me, I'm really starting to meet so many people that come up and say, oh, I listen to the podcast and I start talking to them and realize, wow, I mean, everybody's got just such a great story in the hobby just to sit back and listen to, you know, some of the stories that you hear, uh, you know, it would be stories that I would like to sit back and listen to. And I'm, I'm trying to bring more, more people on, you know, that, that I become impressed with that I'm talking with. So Thursday's episode, kind of a little lead up there Thursday's episode. I have a great guest coming on. Uh, we're talking about financial literacy and, and the benefits of making the hobby, a legit, a legitimate business. Uh, and, and it's going to be a great episode and, and I think everybody's going to be excited to, uh, to, to listen to this one, but that's it. That's all I have for today. Uh, enjoy this. Sounds like I'm already losing my voice. I haven't even started yelling at the TV yet. I feel like I'm losing my voice here. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl. Go chiefs. Uh, hopefully when, uh, when I come back, uh, I'll be back. Well, it'll be a week. Hopefully I'll be talking about how happy I am. The chiefs won. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And if you like what you hear, please like, definitely subscribe. And most importantly, tell a friend and spread the word. Until next time, take care of yourselves and everyone around you.